Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I'm here back on my floor and today I wanted to talk about something that was similar to my MCAT video and my MCAT study schedule video. So today I just want to specifically focus on the car section of the MCAT. I know that cars is a very, very tricky part of the MCAT and if you're anything like me, you probably went into it thinking that it was just basic reading comprehension and it wouldn't be too bad. But personally, I thought that the car section was very difficult and it was much harder than I thought it was going to be. So in this video, I want to talk to you guys about how I ended up tackling the car section, the tips that I used, the strategy that I used, and what I found really helped during my studying. I hope these tips help you guys and if you have any questions, please let me know and let's hop right in. Okay, so the very first thing that I wanna talk about and one of the things that I did when I was starting to study for this section was not timing myself at the beginning. I think it's really important to get accustomed to the passages and the questions without the pressure of time at first. And then once you get a little bit more used to it, then you can start timing yourself. What I would do at the beginning is just start by doing the passages as slowly or as quickly as you would like, however long it takes you to really get through them and feel like you're doing a good job. And while you're doing that, have a stopwatch that's timing up and so you can kind of see where you're at. Even if it takes you like 20 minutes to do passage, I just think it's important to be able to have some sort of idea of how long it takes you to do the passage and how much you will need to cut down in the future. So the second thing I wanna mention is that there is a really big difference between the double AMC practice passages that they give you that you can find in the bundle or in practice tests and the ones that you can find in like Princeton Review and Kaplan book. Now I actually started off by using the Princeton Review cars book and honestly, they do help a little bit, but the questions and the passages are phrased so differently than how they will be on the actual test. So I think that's really important to keep in mind. Honestly, looking back, I think something that I could have done is just focused on the AAMC practice passages and then just gone back to those passages even when I finished all of them because most likely you probably won't remember them. The MCAT phrases things in a very specific way, so it's really important to remember that and not get caught up in how you're doing on questions from a Kaplan book or from some other sort of third party resource. Ultimately, you have about 10 minutes per passage, but I would say at the end of the day, before you take the test, you're probably gonna wanna get down to a little bit less than that and make sure you can do your CARS passages in probably eight minutes, I would say that's probably a pretty good estimate because you don't know when you're gonna get tripped up and you want some extra time to be able to go back to questions you didn't know how to answer and review what you didn't know. But I would say just to start, I think a good place to start timing yourself at is 10 to 12 minutes, kind of depending on you and how much time you need to cut down from where you started. And then I started doing about two timed passages a day for about five to six days a week. I mean, it really depends on what your schedule is. Obviously, it depends a lot on how much time you are giving yourself to study for the test in general, but even if you are giving yourself a good amount of time, I would definitely start studying for CARS at the beginning. I talked about this in my original MCAT video, but I do wanna emphasize it again, that the CARS section is a section that is really difficult to improve on. And that does not mean you can't improve on it. That is not what I'm saying at all. I'm just saying that if you find you are not getting the scores you want to and you really want to improve, you do want to give yourself the time and you know, however long that takes, it could take weeks, it could take months in order to get where you are. It's just one of those things. It's not going to take like a week to figure it out. You know, it's a longer process to improve on that section. Getting into the strategy on how I actually tackled the passages. So I started by just reading the passage. I didn't skip around. I've read things online where they say to like start reading it and if it seems hard, skip around to different passages. Personally, I wouldn't do that because I think then you kind of just get like a little tripped up in your mind and I don't know, like maybe that helps you, but I think that's just like too complicated. So 
Regardless of what is in the passage, just start by reading the passage. And after I just read the passage normally, I would go through each paragraph and just generally outline in my head. You can write it out if you want to, but I would just outline it in my head since it saves a lot of time what the passage is about. So I would say, okay, paragraph one is about this topic. Paragraph two is saying this. And what you wanna do during this process is just get an overall understanding for the main argument. You wanna know what ideas are being conveyed. You wanna know overall what is going on. You can worry about the details later if there's a specific question on a detail in the passage, but you generally just wanna get a feel for what the author is trying to tell you. If you start reading a passage and you just start getting really thrown off and the language is difficult and you start getting really nervous, just take a deep breath, relax, and just go back and start reading the passage again. A lot of the time the passages will be intentionally difficult and they'll use really complicated language or phrasing, but it's really just meant to throw you off, but don't let it throw you off, you know? Just take a breath and then come back to it and look at it in plain sight, and I'm sure you'll be able to figure it out as you keep going through the passage. Sometimes the passages will be really difficult to understand, but then the questions are a lot simpler. And then sometimes it's also vice versa. But don't worry, just read it, relax, and just keep going. So then when you start getting to the questions, the first thing that I did was I started just eliminating answer choices so if you see something and you're like, I know that's not correct, just cross it off. And then the next thing, which is something that I figured out and it totally changed my cars game, was that you need to make sure you're not making assumptions about the question or the passage. So a lot of the time I would be stuck between two answer choices. And what you have to do is you have to go through those answer choices and say to yourself, okay, am I making assumptions about the passage or is there real concrete evidence that this is true? You really just wanna ask yourself which answer choice is more obvious. And once you start doing that, it will be a lot easier to differentiate between the answer choices. A lot of the answer choices will be based on assumptions that you might make about that passage. So that's how I would generally approach it. If you still can't figure it out, don't worry about it. Just flag it and come back to it and work on questions that are easier because you don't wanna waste time just on one question. I found that there were a lot of questions that were focused on deciphering the author's tone and how they feel about something. And I think that just comes down to looking at the vocabulary. That was something that was a little bit difficult for me as well, but you have to focus on the specific vocabulary that the author uses and try to use that to figure out how they feel about something. If the question is asking about the tone of the passage in general or about the main idea conveyed in the passage, I would just focus on the intro and conclusion rather than having to reread the passage to figure out what the author's tone is. But another good thing you could do is as you're just reading the passage, you know, think about, okay, this is what the passage is about and this is how the author feels about it. They might not feel anything about it, but sometimes it will ask you to decipher the author's tone and that could be a big part of the passage. Another thing that I forgot to talk about, but I just wanna mention it now, is that highlighting can be really useful. You do have a highlighting tool on the MCAT and what I would do is I would pretty much just highlight about one key idea from each paragraph. You wanna highlight key ideas. I really wouldn't focus that much on the details just because I feel like those are things you can pick at later, but the highlighting will help you as well with the outline and just constructing what you believe the passage is about. So yeah, that's pretty much just how I approach the Cars passages. And I think the biggest tip that I could give you is just to keep practicing, just practice as much as possible. And I just think as you do more and more practice, you get used to the type of questions and passages the MCAT will ask. So I just think it's one of those things that you just have to keep going. You get a greater intuition for it as you go on, I think as well. So just keep practicing. And then I really wanna quickly just touch on a few things that people talked about that I don't think were particularly helpful and I just think are not really useful pieces of advice. Not to say that these couldn't be helpful for you, but I generally just don't think these are like the greatest things, but I have heard people talk about them before. So I think one thing that I saw a lot online, but personally I just think is like not really true, is that you should just practice reading more 
in real life. And the reason why I don't agree with this is because I feel like as somebody that has read a decent amount in her life, that might help you, but it also might not help you at all. And again, like I said, I think the MCAT phrases things in a very particular way. And I think that the questions are something you can really only get when you are focusing on those MCAT questions in cars. Kind of like I talked about before, I don't think that skipping around to different passages is really a good idea. I also think it can waste a lot of time if you're trying just to find an easy one. You really do have limited time on the test, so timing is so important for the car section especially. Another thing that I personally do not agree with, but maybe this might help you, is reading the questions before you read the passage. And the reason why I would say that is because I think it is so important to go into the passage with an open mind. Personally, I think that if you read the questions first, it can kind of make it a little bit confusing and you might start making assumptions on the passage and then end up getting those questions wrong. So I don't know, I just don't think it's really that great of a tip. Maybe it works for some people, but in general, it's just not really something I would recommend. So so yeah, that's pretty much it. Honestly, this is what I did for cars and this is what worked for me. And I think that these strategies can be really, really helpful. Like I said, I think it comes down to practice, putting those strategies in place and just working hard at it. But it will take a lot of practice passages to boost your car scores up. Funnily enough, I ended up actually doing worse on this section than I had been doing in the practice test, which wasn't really the case for other sections. But I think during my practice, test I was getting in like the 98th percentile and then on the actual exam I got in I think I was like the 90th percentile so not bad but I ended up doing a little bit worse I'm honestly not exactly sure why that is I just think it depends on the test you take but I can definitely tell you that from the beginning when I started practicing cars I was struggling so much and I wasn't getting like any of the questions right so to go from that to getting in the 98th percentile on the practice test I think just shows that these strategies really worked for me and the more I practiced the better I got so please subscribe like this video and I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye guys.